are the unfaithful still Christians? Thank you for your time in this short lesson. In context, the title of this is in reference to brethren that are baptized into the Lord and into his church according to the New Testament pattern. Are the unfaithful still Christians? Is it ever appropriate to refer to the apostate child of God, one who has ceased to be faithful, as a Christian? This semantic problem has generated confusion among the Lord's people for many years. The controversy results from the different ways in which the term Christian is employed among the people of God. The issue is not one that is easy to resolve due to the fact that not even scholars are agreed as to the precise significance of the Greek term Christianos. Let's note these possibilities. One authority, Nigel Turner, a highly respected British scholar, contends that the suffix Ian conveys the idea of belonging to in the common Greek of the New Testament era so that in the parlance of the New Testament it denotes those who belong to Christ. Turner also suggested that Christianos might relate to the Greek term shiro, to anoint, as reflected also in the title Christ. It thus could be a term signifying those who have been anointed, in the sense of 2 Corinthians 1 verse 21. Now he that establishes us with you in Christ, and anointed us in God. If this view is correct, then anyone who has obeyed the gospel will technically be a Christian until the time of judgment, since he will belong to Christ until then. At that point, however, those who have abandoned the Lord will be gathered out of his kingdom. Matthew 13, 41. Until then, they remain in the kingdom, though they may become unfaithful. We acknowledge that apostates are still children of God inasmuch as we do not require their rebaptism, the only way to enter the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 12.13, as a condition of their restitution. On the other hand, if one followed the suggestion of J. H. Thayer, he might conclude that Christianos signifies a follower of Christ. In that case, one might reason that whenever one ceases to follow the Lord, he has disqualified himself from wearing the name Christian. So in conclusion, the question becomes, then, whose definition is to be accepted? The fact is, the term Christian is used only three times in the New Testament. Acts 11.26 Acts 26.28 and 1 Peter 4.16. Since the word is without definitive contextual definition in any of those references, one simply cannot be too dogmatic in his use of the term as it applies to one who has genuinely obeyed the gospel plan of salvation at some point in his life. Every knowledgeable person must concede that when a brother or sister in the Lord abandons Christ, he or she is lost. And really, we should not wrangle over whether or not Christian can be applied technically to such a person. Let us rather employ our energies in seeking to reclaim those who are in danger of eternal separation from God. And finally, we must respectfully note that one who has only a nominal identification with the Christian faith, who has not legitimately yielded to the gospel, 1 Peter 4, 16 and 17, cannot be designated as a Christian in the genuine sense of that term. 
I hope this short study has given you a little more insight. May you be blessed.